The Well-to-Wheels pane, or WTW pane, is where Greet users can explore Well-to-Wheels results of vehicle technologies. If the selected vehicle technology has vehicle cycle information associated with it, such as materials, components, or fluids to build the vehicle, the cradle-to-grave results of these items can be found here too. There are two frames in the WTW pane. The first is the Vehicles menu, on the left, where you can search for a vehicle by expanding the types of fuel it uses, or type the name in the search bar at the top of the frame. Vehicle technologies are grouped by fuel or energy used and can be categorized under multiple fuels. For example, E10 PHEV vehicles can be found under both the E10 and electricity groups. The Greet.net model uses a standard nomenclature for vehicles to help users quickly identify the vehicle they're looking for. If you create a new vehicle, you can name it however you like and do not need to follow this nomenclature. Once a vehicle is selected, a table appears to the right showing parameters and various results for that vehicle. This display frame is the second frame in the WTW pane. Notice at the top of the display frame that the name of the selected vehicle and fuel blend are hyperlinked. Clicking on the hyperlinked vehicle name opens a vehicle editor window. For a full description of how to edit vehicles, you can view the vehicle editor video in the Greet tutorial series. And clicking on the hyperlinked fuel blend, opens a Pathway Editor window. For a full description of how to edit pathways, you can view the Pathway Editing video. Beneath the descriptive information is the results table, showing Cradle to Grave, or Well to Wheels, results. As you've probably seen in standard GREET results, the WTW results are broken into individual energy sources and emission types. The diagram shown here presents the organizational structure for the Cradle to Grave results which are arranged into two divisions, well-to-wheels and vehicle cycle. These divisions are further broken down into the columns that make up the results table. The column heading Mode refers to the mode in which the engine is operating, which for most vehicles is just regular mode. Vehicles with batteries have results split into two modes, Charge Depleting, or CD, and Charge Sustaining, or CS. Hybrid vehicles can have multiple operational modes based on the battery state of charge profile, but Greet simplifies these to just two modes. Again, see the Vehicle Editor video in this series for a more detailed explanation of operational modes in Greet. To copy any of these results to Excel, I can select a range of results. Then I right-click on the selection and choose Copy Values. I can also click in the empty box at the top left of the table which selects all cells in the table, then I can right-click in the table and copy all values. In this first example, I'm going to show results for a vehicle that can accommodate many different liquid fuels, the internal combustion engine vehicle. And I'm going to show three different sets of results for three different fuels, E10 gasoline, E85 ethanol, and methanol or M85. In the WTW pane under the Vehicles menu, I'll expand the E10 category and open results for CAR SIICEV E10. I'll click on the Vehicle link in the Results frame to open the Vehicle Editor. And under Vehicle Power Plant, I can see some of the details about the vehicle when it is powered by E10, such as the upstream pathway for the fuel and the miles per gallon gasoline equivalent, which in this version of Greet is just over 26 mpg. Closing the vehicle editor, I'll now open results under E85 for CAR SI ICEV ETOH flex fuel vehicle. Again, clicking on the vehicle link and looking under vehicle power plant, I can see that now the internal combustion engine is powered by E85 and the MPG is just over 26, as it was with E10. If I open the vehicle editor for the methanol flexible fuel-powered ICEV, again, MPG would be just over 26. So what might be changing in the WTW results between each of these vehicle scenarios? I previously copied results for each and pasted them into a spreadsheet to compare them. I have the WTP results, the operation-only results, and then the sum of the two, which are WTW results. If I highlight the WTP results, 
you can see that the results are all different. This makes sense because each scenario included a different upstream fuel pathway. If I highlight the operation only results, you can see that they're all the same. This is because all three scenarios utilized the same fuel economy of 26 miles per gallon. I'd like to show a brief example to highlight the results for the vehicle cycle components that can be included in the well to wheels results for a vehicle. I'll open the EV electric car in the vehicle editor, and at the right is where vehicle cycle components are listed under a tab called vehicle construction. There is detailed information entered here regarding ADR or assembly disposal recycling, the battery, components such as the powertrain and transmission systems, fluids, and other equipment or materials can be included as well. Some vehicles in Greet include this information by default. Users can certainly enter this information if they'd like. I also want to point out the field in the upper right of the vehicle editor where lifetime vehicle miles traveled can be entered. The vehicle component results in the WTW pane are calculated using the value in this field. If you double the number of lifetime VMT, the results per mile or kilometer will be cut in half. The life cycle results for these components are reported in the WTW pane. Moving to the right of the WTW results, I can see the results for the components I saw in the vehicle editor window. Powertrain, transmission, etc. This functionality adds an optional level of specificity to the WTW results. In this last example, I'm going to show where to find the WTP and operation results that sum to equal WTW results. Keep in mind that WTW results are in units per mile, whereas WTP results are in units per unit of energy, but I can match the functional unit between the different results presentations to verify that they're providing the same result. I'll again use the internal combustion engine with E10 as the fuel blend and open the WTW results for that vehicle. For the example, I'll trace the VOC emissions, which total 0.13 grams per mile for the WTP phase in this version of GREET. I'll try to find that same value in the WTP pane, and I previously selected this pathway there. The VOC result is 28.23 milligrams per megajoule not exactly the same value as I saw before, so I'll change the functional unit. Recall from a previous example that this vehicle has a fuel economy of just over 26 miles per gallon. So I'll change the functional unit from one megajoule to 1 26th of a gallon, which is the amount of fuel required to drive one mile. And the vehicle refreshes to 0.13 grams per mile, the same result as in the WTW pane. That's how to identify the WTP contribution to the WTW results. Now to trace the operation results for VOCs, I'll click on the linked vehicle name, SIICEV E10, to open the vehicle editor. Then I'll expand the energy sources and tailpipe emissions, and in this version of GREET, the VOC result is 72.85 micrograms per meter. Back in the WTW pane, the VOC operation only result is 0.12 grams per mile. So again, I have to change the functional unit. And I'll change this in the general settings. In the main menu at the top of the screen, I'll select Preferences and General Settings. And under the Preferred Units tab, I'll scroll down to Vehicle Emission Factor and change the user defined unit to grams per mile. When I reopen the vehicle editor for my vehicle, the VOC result is 0.12 grams per mile, just as it is reported in the WTW pane results. So, make sure to pay attention to the functional unit when tracing results. Greet allows users to adjust the functional unit to make it easier to compare results. That's it for the WTW pane video. You can watch all the previous videos in this series on the GREET Tutorial Video Series YouTube channel, and subscribe to find out when new videos are posted. Thanks for watching.